Okay, let's talk about some of the tools you're going to need to get started on doing laptop repairs. First and most basic is just a screwdriver. You could almost get away with doing a whole repair on a laptop with just a screwdriver. That's a Phillips. You should have a Phillips and a straight head. Um, a smart thing to do might be to get a screwdriver kit like this one. This is my favorite one. It's made by a company called Velamin, and I like them because they're super cheap, and the tips of the screwdrivers don't wear out. A lot of cheap screwdrivers do, but this set does not. What does break, however, is the handles, and these two broke in half, but they are actually my favorite two screwdrivers that I use for doing laptop repair. It's that one and that one out of the Velamin case. And you'll see in the videos, these are the screwdrivers I mainly use for uh, taking the laptops apart. Uh, I like that they broke because they fit in your hand easier and they're easier to maneuver. And uh, that's what I use for screwdrivers. Now you could also get precision screwdrivers too. And I bought these at Radio Shack and they're good for getting in the real fine screws. Then you're going to need pliers and wire cutters. Definitely need both of these. I recommend getting for pliers a set like this and with the wire cutters included. You get them at like Home Depot or Lowe's or any hardware store. And these will allow you to get into the more tinier places where mainly that's all you deal with with laptops. You need a small set of tools as well. Definitely need to have a flashlight. Something where if a spot's dark you can see a little bit better. And a soldering iron is crucial. Now this is the soldering iron stand. And that's the soldering iron that I use. Just a simple Radio Shack 15 watt soldering iron. Does the job for me. This is the model number. It's a 64-2051B. And the stand, you get that separate or sometimes they come in a combination. Another thing that's really wise to get is a desoldering iron, especially for power jacks. If you got some stingy power jacks that don't want to become disconnected, you use this thing, which is desoldering iron. It's neat, you actually squeeze that little red thing and then you, when you release it, you could suck the solder out through the soldering iron. Or you could use desoldering braid, which is another thing I use in conjunction with the desoldering iron, which seems to work great. This is the solder I use, 6040, 0.032 diameter rosin core solder. I get that at Radio Shack. And that's pretty much my soldering kit right there. Another must is a multimeter. You can find these ranging from like $10 to $100. This is a Radio Shack model. Not my favorite model. The one I use in the videos is my favorite model, which I got at Micro Center for like 10 bucks. So you can find them cheap. And uh, what you just want to have are the basics. I mean, uh, there's not too many features that I would recommend for a uh, multimeter. But one that I do is definitely to make sure it has a, a beep mode where if you set it to test continuity and you touch the two leads together, you're going to get a beep because I use that a lot when I do power jack repairs. And next is just to have some wire when you're doing power jack repairs or different types of repairs. You get this at any type of store like Radio Shack or order it online. Heat shrink tubing is a must. I use this quite a bit, especially when I'm doing power adapter repairs where I have to replace the tip on a power adapter or do any kind of repair on a power adapter. Heat shrink tubing is another place you can get any pretty much anywhere. I get mine at Radio Shack and Micro Center, but you can order it online. Another tool that I feel is a must is helping hands. Helping hands is simply, you know, a base with uh, some alligator clips connected to it and a magnifying glass. It allows you to hold things, providing you basically with another set of hands so you could do some, you know, more difficult tasks like soldering things or uh, having things held down that would be normally flapping all around. So helping hands are great for that. Files. Definitely get a small set of files, of like tiny files. I use this especially for um, scuffing up a wire or creating uh, contact points on a motherboard. And this picture shows uh, files. Don't get the wrong idea. These are actually miniature files. They're pretty small. You'll see how they look in the videos. Exacto knives. Now, exacto knives are something I use fairly frequently, but you never know when you're going to need something really sharp to, to cut something that you're dealing with. And X-Acto knives are small and they're sharp and it's a perfect tool to uh, get in there and cut things or shave things that uh, need to be uh, taken care of. And the next thing is glue. Now this is Elmer's Carpenter's glue. I'm almost using this just for the sake of, of the picture, but I use that very sparingly. The main glues that I actually use are a little bit of Gorilla Glue, but mainly Crazy Glue. Crazy Glue is actually very great for uh, attaching plastic to plastic, and a lot of laptop repairs are just dealing with plastic. 
Um, so definitely recommend Crazy Glue. It's cheap, and you get your hands on that pretty much anywhere as well. When you want something a little more difficult and you need a strong bond, try epoxy. They make a five-minute epoxy, which basically dries in five minutes. I recommend letting it sit overnight, but you could technically dry things in five minutes, and then they make different bonds of epoxy, and we actually have to mix two tubes of material. Uh, and it, it smells pretty strong. You want to be in a ventilated area, but it does provide a strong bond. Haven't used epoxy in a while. Again, my main thing that I use is the crazy glue. Thermal grease. Now, thermal grease is what we use to create a bond between the processor and the heat sink so heat can flow through efficiently and dissipate. And a popular brand of thermal grease is Arctic Silver. And I have a little tube of that, and that's what I use mainly. It gets a little expensive, but you can use pretty much any thermal grease. You'll be okay. Now, you'll see in the later videos exactly how I use the thermal grease, how much I use, and this kind of thing. So uh, stay tuned for that. Okay, now foam. I always use a piece of foam when I'm working on laptops so I don't scratch the top of the laptop when I'm working on it upside down. You can also use it with circuit boards if you don't want like a delicate circuit board to touch the surface that you're working on. I get these foam pieces usually out of desktop motherboard boxes. When I get a motherboard in a, for a desktop, it's usually shipped in a box that has a square piece of foam under it. That's pretty much exactly what I'm using there. Compressed air. Now, if you watch these videos, you're going to see that I use compressed air a lot when I'm uh, working on laptops. I use it to clean out dusty areas on a laptop. I also use it to blow out the CPU fan, get all the chunks of dust out of there. Also, in the heat sink for the CPU, I, I blow air right through the fins of that and clean that all out. Now, the only problem with compressed air is it's expensive. So if you're going to use a lot of it, I recommend using like a blower on a wet dry vac. And I talk about one that I recommend later in this video. A drill. A drill is a great thing to have if you ever need to drill holes in a laptop case, which I'll show you in a couple of the videos. And get a good set of drill bits that aren't going to uh, flake out on you if possible. I prefer a cordless drill just because it's more easy to, you know, maneuver. It's not too unwieldy, so I use a Black & Decker for that. Screws and hardware. Every time I have some leftover screws or I acquire screws from anywhere that are small and tiny, I collect them. I put them in a small little case, store them up because you never know when you're going to need them. Now, it's nice to have a couple little cases around just to put screws and what rubber pieces and different things that you're going to be doing when we take apart laptops. Get yourself a tape measure or a ruler or something where you can make measurements or size things up if you need to do that, which will definitely happen, especially with laptop screens and that sort of thing. Get yourself a set of tweezers. Remember, you're working in very confined areas. Um, if you drop a screw or if you need to remove a wire or get into a certain spot and you just can't do it with a pair of needle nose pliers, these are the tools you want to use. I'd buy a whole set of them so you have different varieties so you get in different, different areas. And uh, definitely put some tweezers in your toolkit. Allen wrenches. Not terribly commonly used on laptops, but every once in a while you're going to encounter them. So it's probably wise to get a, just a cheap set of Allen wrenches or one of those all-in-one Allen wrench you know, devices that have like six of them or eight of them sticking out like this one here. Paint brushes. I use these paint brushes a lot. I think I got them at Ikea for like $7 for a whole set of them. And I use them to dust off certain parts of the laptop. It's a great thing to use as a duster and you could always shake the dust out of them when you're done. But it's great for laptops because it, it doesn't scratch anything and it gets all the dust out of the little crevices and crannies of the laptop. I love the Stinger 2.5 gallon wet dry vac, which is what this is here. Uh, especially with the brush attachment, it's great for cleaning out keyboards, cleaning up all the dirt off of the top and bottom parts of the case of a computer. Even when you open up the computer, you can use that wet dry vac and suck out a lot of the dust that's on the inside. You'll see how I use it in the videos. Great tool to have in your shop. I definitely recommend it. It's not a necessity, but it's a good idea to have a socket set or something you can unscrew standoffs or bolts or something that's stuck onto a laptop there. And finally, if you look around, you're going to find computer repair kits that have most of the tools I talked about already in them. You get the pliers, the screwdrivers, soldering iron, a small drill in a lot of them, Allen wrenches, X-Acto knives, and tweezers. It is a good thing to have, especially if you're an on-site technician and you need all your tools in one place. So definitely check them out. You can get them at Radio Shack, Micro Center, uh, Newegg. Any big computer store is going to have something like that for you. 
Well, that's going to wrap up the the tools that you need. I went through the basic tools. Some are more necessary than others. As you continue to watch the videos, you'll see what I use the most, and then you'll know you know what priority to get these tools. But that's a quick rundown of pretty much everything I use to get laptop repairs done. Hope it helped.